A new day is dawning on the busiest few weeks of Enduro World Series racing in history and it all starts right here. Yes, we are finally back in France after just over two years of COVID affected seasons. And it is fantastic to be back in this bike mad country again. We are here at the Pyrenees Bike Festival for rounds five and six of this year's championship from the Michelin EWS Ludenville. If you have missed anything of this season's racing, what are you doing? It's all available on GMBN for you to watch back. Now, I advise you to get up to speed before we get racing underway. Now, let's take a look at what the course looks like for round five of this year's championship. The first stage of the day is the five kilometer long Vinci's Privilege. Then it's on to the shortest of the day. Stage two is Mavic's port at just one kilometer in length. The third stage is the local favorite, Matra's Dolmens, at just over three and a half k in length. Stage four is Mountain Lines Val Dob, which boasts the biggest vertical drop of 900 meters before the racers head back to town via the final stage, Michelin's La Peak. Well, that is the race course. And without further ado, it is time to get some bike racers on it. We are amidst an absolutely vintage Enduro World Series season. And here then, for your viewing pleasure, is the fifth round of it. The Michelin EWS Ludenville starts now. Heavy rain the day before racing forced a cancellation of the super steep Dolman stage. Powdery dust was transformed to super slick mud, causing carnage in practice. As the riders rolled out the Pyrenees Bike Festival, the weather was still looking ominous. The first stage of the day was Vinci's Privilege. At five kilometers long and with a drop of 800 meters, it was set to be a wet wake-up call. The mud changed the complexion of the race altogether. Scotland's Katie Winton was right at home in the tricky conditions. Fantastic. I'm the sponsor's dream at the moment. The Michelin tyre's on and it is the tyre for this race. My God. But I was kind of confident in the dirt being quite good and it was, it was. You just have to trust it. Two of the pre-race French favourites, Melanie Poujan and Isabel Cordurier, were struggling to get up to pace. Uh, it's more more slippery than uh, yesterday. It was really difficult to manage because it was both like slippery but not too much and it's kind of the condition I like the less because you never know how to push and I know this was not fast enough but I'll just try to stay safe we have so many runs coming despite tangling with Ella Connolly on track Noga Karem won stage one Took a bit of a gamble and stayed on dry tires and it's maybe not the worst decision I've made. Yeah, I think it's just gonna get more polished really. Like, it's not that wet, it's just slick because the dirt's actually quite hard once it starts drying up. Please, weather, keep, stay like this and we enjoy the day. Yeah, good to be back. Typical French downhill. So we love it, all the French love it. The Pro Men's Championship leader Richie Rood was feeling his way into the race. Good opener, I think, like lots of corners and just had a nail. So if the horse was greasy, I feel like I was that little hesitant, but had a good run, so I'm happy and start off the weekend good. <laughs> Portugal's Jose Borges split the warring title contenders. His Canyon Collective teammate Jack Moyer was showing few signs of hesitation. Pretty 
pretty slick. Sliding around. Clean run though. I don't know, I was confused yesterday it was raining, but the ground wasn't getting muddy. It was just slick. The Aussie went on to win the stage and take an early lead. Stage two was Mavic's Portakai, which had also been shortened due to some steep sections being virtually unrideable. But even with those parts removed, it still represented a supremely physical challenge. The second stage of the day was shortened due to damage done by the previous day's weather. As a result, it was tighter than ever. The top seven pro men were within a second of each other. halfway point of the race, the racers got a chance to return to the pits to take on some food and take advantage of some tech assistance. Like I don't know when to change this. I was on full muds this morning and it was pretty sick but I just think that the front mud can be pretty nervous on dry stuff so I just want my dry tires back. I just want it to be dry really. <laughs> Giants Ewan Deneau took his debut stage win on stage two. It's great, my first uh, stage win. It's awesome. Uh, this is the shortest, I think, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a good one. Two more stages to come and the last one is really, really hard. But it was still Jack Moyer in control of the race. It's so slick up there. The rain's not going into the dirt. One shiny blue groove right the whole way down. It's like pretty sketch. In the pro men's, the second on stage two pushed Jack Moyer's lead out to just over six seconds from Ewan Deneau. It's stayed dry, it's just gone a bit sticky, so it's actually really fun to ride in and we're not soaking wet, so it's pretty good. Noga Karem backed up her early pace with another stage win. Actually, yesterday I was really struggling and wasn't super motivated for today, but I managed to change my mental state. And yeah, today was good. I had a little coffee stop together with Ella on stage one. So it's a bit of shame, but other than that, it was good. Pujan and Kudurye were fighting hard to close the gap. And here's how the race looked after two stages. Noga Karem held a slender lead ahead of Melanie Pujan and Isabel Cordurie. Hattie Harnden was fourth. The third stage was to be the stunning Mountain Lions Val Dobe. A lengthy physical test down some extremely fast bike park trails before a quintessentially French steep grass section. Trex Harry Harnden was warming into the race nicely. She was second on the stage. It's a mega trail and even without much climbing in it, it, it takes your breath away. <laughs> Next was quite physical, does that suit you? Uh, I hope so. I don't know, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> the pressure was building at the front. A crash from Karem threatened to undo all her good work. Go, 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 go! Hello. <laughs> Crash again? Why do I always crash? Isabel Cordurier took her first stage win on French soil for over two years. <laughs> Noga Karem's lead held just. The most physically demanding stage of the race, the Queen stage, lay in wait. Poland, Slavomir Lukasic was putting in another superb set of stages. One to go, <laughs> but that, that was good, that was good, true enduro. <laughs> Martin Mays was on a charge with a third on stage three. There was uh, some good rats 
up the top and uh, you could really pin it down the corners. So uh, I actually really enjoy myself. The coveted title of fastest Frenchman was being led by Theo Galli, who was now up in deferred. Yeah, you know, the grip is amazing. It's perfect condition. But it was a familiar pairing out front. Yet again, Rude versus Moyer 2021 would come down to one last stage. The most physical test of the weekend, the Queen stage would settle things. Michelin's La Pique was four kilometers long and featured a brutal combination of all things Ludenville. There were points on offer and the stage would see the racers plunge through the ancient town itself to the finish. The battle at the front of the pro women's field is the tightest in EWS history and amidst the chaos, Melanie Pujan managed to shore up her points haul by overtaking Noga Karem to claim second place. Isabel Corderier had ridden well, but it wouldn't be enough for a podium. Hattie Harnden has proved herself to be clinical on the stages that offer additional points in 2021, and it would be no different at round five. The British rider won the final stage by a towering 20.21 seconds. That sledgehammering off the stage would leapfrog her up the rankings and deliver her her second consecutive EWS victory. How was the day? Uh, it was really good. Yeah, I always kind of start a little bit slower possibly and then I try and get better as the day goes on. Uh, yeah, the confidence is up there definitely. In the pro men's race, Martin Mays had a good run to fourth place in the overall. That unofficial fastest Frenchman title went to specialised Kevin McKell, who really lit up the timing screens in the second half of the day. All eyes were now on Richie Rood and Jack Moyer. It was the Canyon Collective rider who would come out on top with a superb win on the last stage. He'd only dropped one place out on the stages all day. Collecting the gold medal at Michelin EWS Ludenville would represent Moyer's third win of the year. Was it a bit of a surprise, the stages, or did you kind of predict the condition they were going to be in? It wasn't getting soggier with the rain, it was just, it was like concrete and it was getting super slick, so it was hard to know what tyres to run because the spikes weren't really digging into that, but it was raining, so. Yeah, bike is surprisingly clean to be fair after today's race. Got a couple of days off and then you're straight back in. Confidence must be good at the moment. Yeah, one day off and then get smoked again. <laughs> Training hard and I'm ready to go. I just need to have some good, uh, like, consistent days for the rest of the season. That leaves the championship standings looking like this. Jack Moyer takes control of the title race, but there is really little to choose between himself and yet he's Richie Rude. In the pro women's, Melanie Pujan may not have won a stage during round five, but she rode superbly well all day to maintain her lead in the overall. Hattie Harnden is second, and Isbo Corderier is third. Canyon Collective remain in control of the team's championship ahead of Pivot Factory Racing and Ibis Enduro team.
Don't forget that there's plenty more action to come from the Pyrenees as we go racing on Saturday evening as round six of the Enduro World Series 2021 gets underway. We'll see you there.